right. Let's see, to see how you're doing. Now, I don't expect you to be able to do all these off the top of your head because you're just learning this law. You'll eventually get used to it. All right, so there we go. Calculate pressure at any point for static liquids in open and closed containers. Oh, maybe we'll get to a closed container before uh, too long. Yeah, we probably won't. Okay, next question. Is this possible? You would love this because it'd be a true false. Is this possible? So we got a container here, and we've got this thing is slanting down like that in this container, right? And then this one, we got atmosphere up here, and this one we got atmosphere, I'm sorry, it was supposed to be higher on that side. So in this one, we got atmosphere here, and it's slanting down, so therefore it's up here. And this one, we got atmosphere there. Because you know the water wants to fall down the hill. Right? So is that possible? So think about it for 30 seconds. Decide if you think that's possible or not. Well, I clean up some of my messes here. Yes. Is that, and well, OK. Is it possible? Yes. Is it static? <laughs> that's what I'm, <laughs> sure, it's possible. But is that a hydrostatic situation? Now I've given it away. Okay, the answer is no. Okay, it's not static. Right? Because if it's static, what would that imply? If it's static, then the pressure along this line has to be constant. Uh-oh. That would mean this is ATM. This must be at PATM, but it's not. It has extra, extra weight on it, pushing it down. Right? So if you had this situation, this would come up and this would go down, and it would be back at the same level, just like every other one of these that I drew. The water level will always go the same if they have the same pressure above them. This is irrelevant. The shape of it is meaningless. It's like saying, what if I had one beaker and the water level did this, right? Is that static? No. Why? Same reason as this. Okay, the de don't let me trick you with the details of the connection here. It's like a magician. Look at that! Is this static over here? Right. They don't usually act that mean when they yell things. They usually have a more, more of a presentation, you know. Um, now, if you want to know physically why, we could think about um, physically why, if this were to happen, let's look at the pressure right versus the pressure on the left, right? So why? If this were to happen, let's think about the pressure along this tube and pretend I drew it flat. Don't worry about the fact that it's at an angle, okay? The reason is that the pressure in this situation is greater than the pressure on the right is greater than the left. Why? Because this would be pressure atmosphere plus rho g oh, all the way to the same level, but down to d right. See, it's, it's a larger amount, d right, right? And that's going to be greater than the left, which is pressure atmosphere plus rho g. And how much is this one? Oh, it's less, see? d left. Because this one's lower, the hydrostatic pressure, well, it's not hydrostatic yet, is less. D left. So all this stuff doesn't matter. It's because D right is greater than D left. That's like the physical reason. The pressure is high here and low here. And we haven't talked about it yet, but when you have a pressure difference, it causes the water to flow. Right? And therefore, it'll move, and this will go up, and that'll go down until it's eventually static. So that would be like if we said describe this in a paragraph. You'd say something like that. Okay. Could this be static in quotes? Oh, you're catching on to my use of quotes for everything. Yes. You're going to get a B. Okay. Um, okay. If one side is exposed to a thinner atmosphere and they are stabilized to different but constant heights of the water. Yeah, so yeah, if you were to like have these things on different planets or whatever, if you were to pull a vacuum on one side, then it could be stable. Yeah, if, if the atmospheric pressure were different or if the pressure above the liquid were different. We'll be doing problems like that. I just don't know if we're going to get to it. All right, okay. Uh, okay, here's a good one here. Let's do this one. Um, example two. Is this not static because of the slanted connecting tube? So it is static. First of all, these are all static. That's a good question, actually. Um, I didn't mean to use actually to imply they aren't usually good questions. I solved it as though it were a flat tube. If it were a slanted tube, 
then we have to start considering the weight of each element of the tube, and it becomes an integral. So that's why I quickly said, oh, let's assume it's flat. We're doing this next, though. Okay, so let's do it. But we're not going to do it with a slant, because then that's an integral. Let's do this. Example two. Here we go. Do, 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 do the hustle. Let's see, like that. So now we just have, kind of like you were saying, what if the tube does something like that? This is going to go to here. Atmosphere, this is going to go to the same level, because I'm telling you it's static, right? Atmosphere, right? So two questions. A, is P on each side of connector the same? And then B, if so, why? And if not, why is it static? If not, why is it static? How could it be static if the pressure on each side of the tube isn't the same? Okay. So I'll give you a second. Think about that. Talk amongst yourselves. Is this not static? Is this line of connection too? Could this be static? All right. All right, what do you think? It's static, nothing's flowing. Sure, the pressure's the same on each side of the tube, but they're at different heights. by Mitch. Um, okay. okay, so hopefully you said uh, no. The question was, is P on each side of the connector the same? No. It's static. The pressure here is PATM plus rho G this D, D left. The pressure here is the same P atmospheric plus rho G D right. right? The pressure is higher here and lower here because it's not as uh, deep, right? So the answer is no, no. And then if not, why aren't we getting a flow, right? We have a case where we have high pressure here, low pressure there. Why doesn't it flow? So sometimes to uh, prove this, you got to go back to Newton's second law. So what we're going to do to show you and to explain it is F, some of the forces in the Y equals mass times acceleration in the Y. Uh, on the uh, vertical part right here, right, this part right here. Here's some water right here. We want to know, is that static? Is that going to move? Right. So let's calculate it. Uh, let's see. Oh, I should use my notes so I don't screw this up. Oh, there they are. Um, let's take, so what is, uh, how did I do this? Uh, P1 and P2. Okay, so what's pushing it up? P high is pushing it up, right? Say it has some area A. So we'll call that um, high, okay, times A is pushing it up in the Y direction. There we go. Up, and then what's going down? Minus MG is going down, right? And then P2, P low is pushing it down. Minus P low. A equals zero. Or oh, equals what? We're solving for it. We want to see is it static or not, right? So that's some of the forces. Um, so let's calculate these two. Right, so this one is what? It's PATM plus DL. PATM, the atmospheric pressure here, plus rho G DL. That's P high, pushing up. And then minus MG, but we know M is rho times V, but we know V is A times L, but we know L is, <laughs> oh, I gotta convert, yeah. L is DL minus DR, right? This difference. Ah, L is DL minus DR. Okay, now you're starting to see what's going to happen, maybe. And then minus, what's PB? P atmosphere, right? Plus rho G DR, plus rho G DR. There's the sum of the forces down to the elemental little values that we originally had, right? The DLs, the DRs, the Gs, the Ds, 
And you say, well, here's a positive P atmosphere and a negative P atmosphere. Interesting. And uh, I left a G off of this one, sorry. There we go. And then we have plus rho G DL and we have uh, minus. Oh, and I left, oh, good Lord. This is a disaster, okay. I left A's off of, I mean, I left A's off of so much, it's easier just to not write any A's down at this point. Let's see. A, okay. I'm going to get fired. Okay, A. All the A's went away is what I'm trying to say. Oh, my God. It's zero, okay? <laughs> just do the algebra. It's zero. <laughs> so the reason you don't get a flow is you would think that this high pressure would push and make it go this way, but there's also the weight. We changed our elevation. So this little column does feel a net pressure up, but it also feels its own weight down, and that's how the thing stays static. Okay? So that's the kind of a problem you could do where you'd have to calculate, apply your little equation at different levels. You needed it here, technically, you needed it here, and you needed it here. Okay? Yeah, let's keep let's just move on. If the algebra doesn't work out, come see me and we'll we'll work on it. Um, ah, okay. Now, we wanted to talk about covered containers, right? Here we go. So here is basically a demo of what we've been doing. Look at that. It's two open containers. And see how the liquid goes to the same level? Look at the beautiful green liquid. Ooh, it's going to the same level because there's P atmosphere on both the top and the bottom. Okay? Will it always stay at the same level? What if I lift it up? Oh! Oh, it went to the same level. So you can see if both of them are open to the same pressure, always goes to the same level. And really, nothing interesting is happening. This level is P atmosphere, and as you go down, it's P atmosphere plus rho GD. Depends on how far down you go. Even though we have a crazy connector, rho atmosphere plus rho GD. So we could go like that. But now the question that's been on your mind the whole lecture, I know, is what happens if we don't have atmospheric pressure over one of them? Right? That's the really tricky part. So think about it in your brain for a second. If I seal this one, shit. Damn it. Oh, too much drama. Oh, so sad. It'll still work, though. Sad. If I seal this one, Look at the two levels, exactly the same. Now what's gonna happen if I lift it? Oh, you have to think about it while I clean up. Okay, what's gonna happen if I lift it? How are the menisci gonna move? I'm running out of towels for this lecture. <laughs> there we go, I've got on my phone. God damn it, Fucking color it green, stupid Jones. I couldn't make this other color. What's it gonna do when I lift this? It's now sealed, what's it gonna do? Is it gonna move this way or that way? Or God knows what's gonna happen at this point. Let's see, what's it gonna do? I'm gonna lift it. Whoa, they stayed exactly where they were. Look at that, they don't move at all. And this has atmosphere, what's happening in here? I need a balloon to show you, look at that. What, what, I can pick it up, oh my God. Oh, crap, okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is calculate what in the heck was going on when I lifted it up and you guys were like so amazed? Uh, let's see. This is our problem we're going to do here. I'm literally out of towels. I have no towels. Okay. Oh, here we go. Let's put it back here. All right. Okay, so in this third example, we have uh, an initial, original static, um, initial static situation. All right, so it's a standard thing that I've been drawing in just the boring case of two connected tubes like this. All right, there they are, meniscus, meniscus, okay? Atmosphere, atmosphere, All right? Connected, blah, blah, blah. Right. And we're gonna, we're gonna cover the right. Initial static, cover the right, All right? Seal it, All right? So now it's at an atmosphere, but it's sealed. It's not free to take any value it won't, or well, it's, it doesn't have the atmosphere holding it at P atmosphere. So I'm not gonna put it on there anymore. I'm just gonna leave it. Now it's at some pressure, who knows what? Because now it could change. It could change because the liquid level could go up and down and the gas is compressible, remember? So we won't use that mathematically, but we do have to keep it in mind. Cover the right and then raise it by 10 centimeters. So that's basically what I did here is I raise this one by 10 centimeters or so, 
And you can see the liquid level went up. It didn't stay, stay low. So if we do that, then it looks like this. Um, <coughs> uh, right, well, we kind of, it goes like that now. And this one is higher, like that, like that. And then this one stayed down here where it was, and this one went way up here because it's now covered. Here we go. I forgot what the question was. What is the pressure here? What is the pressure up there? So you no longer can say, oh, it's P-atmosphere. Something is only guaranteed to be at P-atmosphere when it is held in connection with the atmosphere. But this is no longer held in connection with the atmosphere. Let me pull this down so you can see the board. Okay. So we've got to figure out what it is. Okay. Mm. So I have bullets here to help you think how to do these problems. Let's see. Um, let's see. So the first bad thought, uh, misconception, would be, does it remain P atmosphere since it is sealed? And the answer is no. Right? Gases are compressible. So as this thing moves up and down, the liquid level, see how I drew it? See how big it was here? And look what happened there. It compressed it, except it actually does the opposite. Sorry. Wasn't thinking ahead. Okay, it actually pulls it down. But the point is, just because you seal it doesn't hold it at P atmosphere. The thing that holds it at P atmosphere is not sealing it. It's leaving it exposed to the atmosphere. Okay? So it doesn't remain at P atmosphere. I'm talking about the right side here. Um, right. And to solve this problem, then, we just need this pressure here. We have an equation, but we don't know this. Usually we say, oh, the pressure at some depth is the pressure here plus rho GD. <coughs> but we don't know the pressure here. So maybe we need the pressure at some depth. Right? Do we know the pressure at any depth? Can anybody tell me exactly the pressure at some depth of this column? Think about if you can figure out how you know the pressure at some depth in this column. How do I read this question? If it is sealed, is the liquid continuous? Yes. The liquid is continuous. Right? It's all one liquid. Right? There is one place where we know the pressure. Here, because of the hydrostatic law. Right? It's PATM down there. Has to be. Right? It's hydrostatic. I know this is atmospheric pressure. I can draw a horizontal line. I'm very good at that. I can even do dashed horizontal lines. And I know that's P atmosphere. Okay. Uh, so, so get P atmosphere at uh, a certain depth, right, a certain depth, right? So then you can kind of figure it out. You can say, well, if this one didn't move and I pulled this one up, and this may get into compressibility of the gas a little bit or something, but let's just sort of solve it this way and say, okay, let's apply uh, the equation. P atmosphere is now the depth part equals P naught, well that's P at the top that we're looking for, plus rho G D. Right? D is the 10 centimeters that we raised it. Rho is the density of water, 0.1 meter, you know 9.8, you know the density of water is 1,000, you know P atmosphere is 101,000 newtons per meter squared. So you put all that together and you can get an actual number. Okay? You'd have to think about whether this moves up and down or not. Okay, we'll get into that later. But in the problem, you could just say it moves it up 0.1 millimeters, and therefore it sticks at 0.1 meters. Okay, so we'll do more problems next time, and we'll get into flow and measurement.